بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد Islam has a, is a religion that makes the believer autonomous with the things that he puts into his scales that he will be questioned about Yom al Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an internal navigation system by which we know the difference between right and wrong. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sitting with his companions and a man came to him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Jitta li tas'al an al-bir, qara fastafti qalbak. The man came to him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, you, perhaps you came to ask me about righteousness. He said, ask your heart. He said, righteousness is that which the soul feels content with. Ma tatma inna ilayhi al nafs what the soul feel content with. When you do it, you feel good about it. He said, in sin, and sin is that which wavers in the chest. It wavers in the chest. When you do it, it feels wrong. It feels wrong. And you hate people finding out about it. You dislike people finding out about it. That is something that Basically, we can kind of gauge right and wrong, just intrinsically, we can gauge right and wrong. And because of this, we are responsible for the deeds that we put in the scales by which we will be questioned about Yom Al-Qiyamah. The Prophet وسلم, he said, That indeed you come to me arguing with one another. وَلَعَلَّ بَعْضُكُمْ يَكُونُ أَلْحًا مِنْ بَعْدٍ He said, and perhaps some of you are more articulate than the other. He said, وَأَنَا أَقْدِي عَلَى نَحْوِ مَا سَمِعَ مَا أَسْمَعَ He said, and I judge based upon what I hear. If you come to me and you're arguing about an issue, some of you are more articulate than the other. And I judge the situation based upon what I hear. عَلَى نَحْوِ مَا أَسْمَعَ Based upon the argument that is in front of me, the Prophet ﷺ doesn't know the unseen, right? Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals it to him. He said, فَإِن قَضَيْتُ لَهُ حَقَّ أَخِيهِ فَلَا يَأْخُذَهُ فَإِنَّمَا يَأْخُذُ قِطْعَةً مِنَ النَّارِ He said, so if I judge in a situation giving you the right of your brother, don't take it. Because you are only taking a piece of the hellfire. You know that you're wrong. You know that you are more articulate than he is. However, even if the situation is judged in your favor, it is still your responsibility not to take it if you know that you're wrong. This is the autonomy that Islam gives us, the spiritual autonomy to be in control of your own affairs. You know the difference between right and wrong. You know that at this very juncture that you are more articulate than this person is and that you can articulate yourself in a manner where it makes it appear that you are the one that is right. Even if the affair is judged in your favor, don't take it because you're only taking a portion of the hellfire. A man insulted one of the salaf and he said to him, continue to insult me. It is your sahifa. It is your book you are writing. She want to continue to insult me? Continue to do so because it is your book of deeds that you are writing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the servant, Yawm al-Qiyamah, Iqra kitabaka. Read your book. Today you are sufficient as a proof against your own self. You did this to you. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that Allah will take a man, Yom Al-Qiyamah, and make him sit in front of everybody. And the 99 scrolls will be brought out. Each scroll as far as the eye can see. And Allah will ask the man, read your scrolls. Did my recording angels wrong you in anything? Did they write down anything that you didn't do? Did they write down anything that you didn't say? No. You write your own book. You write your own script. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. وَكُلُّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِ That every human being, we have tied his fate to his own neck. You are responsible for where you go. Take responsibility for your own deeds. Take responsibility for your sahifa, for your book, your muqiyama. This is the autonomy that Islam has given us. And a lot of times we try to put the blame on somebody else. 
It was his fault. It was this one make me do it. This one did it because of, you know, as I was interviewing one of my guests, Dr. Brock Murray, Dr. Raymond Brock Murray. And he said, a lot of times when we see people sin, we say it's their fault. But when we fall into the same sin, we say, oh, it's due to the circumstance. We always make an excuse when it comes to us, but we bring the hammer down very heavy when it comes to other people. But to treat ourselves with the same level of responsibility. And I'll end with this narration that during the time of the Prophet Wasallam, there were different levels, different classes, what we know today as classism. And that the different tribes were known due to their level of prestige or their social, you know, standing in, this, in, in the society. And so there were different certain tribes that had a certain level of authority in Quraysh. One of which is known as the tribe of Makhzum, Bani Makhzum. These were all sub-tribes under the mother tribe, Quraysh. فَهَمَّهُ فَهَمَّ قُرَيْشْ أَمْرَ إِمْرَأَةِ الْمَقْزُمِّيَّةِ الَّتِي سَرَقَتْ That it was a woman from the tribe of Makhzum who stole during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. I want to show you that part of what we're dealing with, with society today is this classism. That there's a certain class of people who can get away with, literally get away with murder. And while other classes of society are held accountable for the smallest, you know, infraction. And it was because of this, you know, this biasness, this prejudice, and this, you know, um, marginalization of, you know, certain classes of people that nations before us were destroyed. And if we continue on the way that we are, we will be destroyed. So when this woman from the tribe of Mechazum stole, Quraysh started to get worried because we know that the, you know, the punishment for stealing, if it meets a certain criteria, that the hand is to be cut. So, and that's not in every situation. As I said, it has to meet a certain criteria, right? Uh, one of the Sahaba, he had a, a servant who stole something from his house. And when the man brought the servant to Umar, anhu, Umar asked him, you know, asked the slave, why did you steal? And the slave said, because my master owed me money and he didn't pay me. And Umar, anhu, he said, go ahead. And he said to the master, to the Sahabi, he said that if you bring another situation like this to me, I'm going to cut your hand instead of his. Because you put the person in the situation to steal. So it's not just cut and dry because someone steals. Nonetheless, the woman stole. So some of Quraysh started to say, well, who can go talk to the Prophet ﷺ about this? This is what the Arabs know as what is called a wasita. A wasita is you have a, a middleman, you have an intermediary. And in the Arab world, you can get away with murder so as long as you have a wasita. If you have a wasita, if you have an a intermediary, someone who is influential, someone who has, you know, whose word holds weight, you can get away with murder literally in the Arab world. So they asked, who is going to go talk to the Prophet Sallallahu on her behalf? So they sent Usama ibn Zayd. Hubba Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was one of the youth that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was, you know, very close to and loved very dearly. So Usama came to talk to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning to kind of let her go. Don't hold her accountable. She's from the tribe of Makhzum. Let her go. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to low when I watch who his face became red. And he said to Usama, Ya Usama, Atashfa' fi haddin min, us min hududillah. Are you trying to intercede in a punishment from the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, Ya Rasulullah, istaghfirli. He said, O Messenger of Allah, seek forgiveness for me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa after processing what was going on, he got on the minbar. After Salatul Isha, he got on the minbar. And he said, Ayyuhan nas. He said, O mankind, O people. He said, Indeed, the people who came before you were destroyed. لِأَنَّهُ إِذَا سَرَقَ فِيهِمَ الشَّرِيفِ تَرَكُهُ That if a noble person stole from amongst them, they would let him go. وَإِذَا سَرَقَ فِيهِمَ الضَّعِيفِ That if the weak person stole from amongst them, then they would establish the punishment against them. This is the society that we live in today. If you come from a certain class, a certain class, then you get away with murder, literally. 
And if you come from a lower class, a more disenfranchised class, then you will be held accountable. You will, pe you will be penalized for the smallest infraction. He said that this happened to the nations that came before you. And as a result of that, they were destroyed. He said, Allah, He said, I swear by Allah, if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, was to steal, I would cut her hand off. I would cut her hand off. Not I would order someone to cut her hand off. I would do it myself. Showing you that there was no prejudice with the Prophet Wasallam. Wrong is wrong is wrong. And that's what it is. And we have to learn that as parents. We have to learn that as teachers. We have to learn that as administrators. We have to learn that as imams. We have to learn that how many masjids, how many masajid do we see this same behavior going on in the masajid. If you're close to the imam, you're close to the board, you can literally get away with murder in the masjid. But if you're just a regular worshiper, a regular congregant who comes in, makes a mistake or whatever the case may be, you may be even subject to the imam giving a khutbah about you. This, this, is where, this is the time that we're living in. And then we wonder why we have so many problems in the ummah, so many problems in the masajid, so many young people don't come to the masjid. Because we'll see the imam's right hand man do something and nothing happens. And then we'll find, you know, just a regular congreg congregant of the community does something. And then, you know, the, the whole dunya has to stand up and hold him accountable. La ilaha illallah. Brothers and sisters, we have to take accountability, take responsibility for our behavior. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'lam. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslim al-kathira wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.